Hi everyone, it's Miss Sims here. Today we get to try a new type of art called typography. And typography is where you use letters and numbers to create your artwork. I'm super excited, I hope you are too. Let's go ahead and get started. Today we're going to be working on a type of art called street art. So yes, we're working on typography, which means we're working with letters and numbers, but we're also adding a certain style and that style is street art. So it almost looks kind of messy a little bit and it's also sometimes called graffiti. And that basically just means that people do it very, very quickly. And that's what we're going to practice today as we work on our typography. As usual, we have two different goals today. The first goal is to combine different elements of art, like shapes and lines, which we're going to do a lot of today. And our second goal is just to try typography and know what that means. It just means we're going to be using our name as the theme because typography is letters and numbers in art. Today, your materials are going to be a blank piece of paper, a pencil with an eraser, a permanent marker and crayons. If you don't have crayons, you can always use colored markers. Once you have your materials out and ready, you can go ahead and click play again and we can get started. I have my paper here sitting in front of me. It's horizontal, meaning it's side to side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the first letter of my name. So my name's Miss Sims, so I'm just going to start with the S and it's going to be nice and big in the middle. I'm actually going to do two letters in mine just so you can see the difference, but please only do one. It will make your project much easier. I'm only doing two so I can kind of give you an idea of what some different letters might look like. So I'm doing an S and a P. The next thing we need to do is bubble. That means we are going around the line we just made. So you can see I'm making another line around that S and now I'm looping it around my original line and it connects. So now instead of a line for an S, we have a shape. Watch again with the P. I'm going around the P, loop around, loop around, loop around. There we go. There's still an empty spot in the middle, so I need to do that loop through the middle too. That's why I showed you a P. So any letters like B, P, those ones you'll have to make those bubbles on the inside. Once you have that, we are going to trace very carefully with our permanent marker on the outside line. And it's going to take us all the way around and it will connect it to a shape. So we're starting with the line, the element of our line, and we're now making it a shape by connecting it all the way around. And we still have our pencil line in the middle. You'll see it again here with the letter P. Once you have shapes for letters, you are going to take the eraser of your pencil and you are going to erase all of the pencil lines you see very gently so you don't scrunch up your paper. This next part is really tricky, so follow along with me. We're going to go from the edge of our paper and find the first line we see of our letter that goes up and down. And we're going to make that extra thick. We're going to make an extra thick line, but only on the part that goes up and down. Here is why it's so tricky. There are lots of lines that go up and down, like this one right here, but it is not the one that's closest to the edge of my paper. See, it's still part of the same curve of the letter, so we're not going to do that. Same with this over here, it's not the same. But look at this side right here. Nothing over here has been in bold yet, so we're going to take the side that's closest to the edge of the paper, and we're going to make that bold, that means thick. We're gonna make just the part that goes up and down thick and stop before our pencil or pen starts going side to side. We're going to do that for all of them. So this part doesn't have one. We're doing it again right here. This can be really tricky. So take your time and practice in pencil if you need to first. I'll show you again with the letter P. So this edge is pretty easy because it's all up and down and this side is all closest to the edge of my paper, so I'm making it nice and thick. Here's what's tricky about letters with loops in them. They kind of split two directions. So if you put both your fingers on the line, you'll notice, hey, there's another part up and down of my shape that doesn't have anything. So we're gonna go to the left closest to the edge of our paper again, that same side, and we're going to make that section if this doesn't turn out perfectly, that is okay because 
we are working on street art and something very new. Street art sometimes looks messy and it's okay to make mistakes. Go ahead and pause the video until you're ready to keep working. Once you are, we are going to pick out three colors that all have something in common. So for example, these are all different shades of green. They all have a little bit of green. One is a light green, one is a medium green, and one is a dark green. You can even see when I hold it up to the camera that the name of this crayon is yellow green. You can always have a grown up help you read the names of the colors if you're not sure what colors to choose. Once you've chosen your three colors, you are going to pick the darkest one of the three you chose. So I'm picking my dark green and I'm going to make kind of like an imaginary line along the bottom of my letter. Remember I'm doing two just so you can see, but that imaginary line is then going to get filled in with the dark color. So it's not going to be a lot of your shape, just a little bit on the edge. You're also going to take your dark color and do that exact same thing on the top, making just one section a little bit dark. Go ahead and pause here until you're ready for the next step. Once you have your darkest color filled in, you are going to pick your medium color, the color that's right in the middle. You're going to do the same thing, make an imaginary line, but some of your parts of your shape might not even need to be part of that line. So for example, this bottom part of my S was so low that it didn't even need a line to divide it. There goes my line. I'm gonna do it at the top and the bottom, just like I did last time, coloring in everything that's on the other side of my line so there's a white stripe in the middle. The last thing we're going to do is take our lightest color that we have and just fill in the white space that's left on our shape. So all of that gets filled in really nicely and neatly. Our last task for the day is just to try and blend these colors in so you don't see such a line. So we're going to take the lightest color and we're going to kind of overlap it a little bit with our medium color. I'm overlapping it on the top part that it touches and I'm overlapping it on the bottom part that it touches. Then I'll get my medium color and I'll overlap it on the lighter part. That means go over the line a little bit. So you're kind of coloring outside of the line that you made inside your shape on purpose. So you don't want to go outside of your shape, but you are making your colors mix together a little bit. So we're going to mix, mix, mix these colors. And your middle color overlaps the light part and it overlaps the dark part. So you'll need to do both of those. The very last thing you'll need to do is get your dark color and have your dark overlap your medium color. So that way everything gets blended in really nicely. Next week is the week of Thanksgiving, so not everyone will have art class like we normally do because Thursday or Friday we have the day off. If you normally have art class on Thursday or Friday, I am still going to post the second half of this lesson so you can learn to add more details, practice some more patterns like we've been working really, really hard on. You do not have to do it if you don't want to. It will just be there for you in case you would like to add more details. I hope you had fun and I can't wait to see what you came up with. Bye.